Once you've gotten familiar with the Groove I.O. nodes and the built-in storage nodes that come pre-installed with Node-RED, you may want to start doing something a little bit more advanced than just taking some localhost value every single time it changes and putting it in some plain text file that's stored directly on your device. In this video, I'll be going a bit more in depth on how to do some logging by taking a button press in the Node-RED dashboard, changing the contents of your data into something more palatable like comma-separated values, and finally logging it to a USB drive that will be plugged into my Groove Rio. Now, if you're not familiar with these file nodes, the Groove I.O. nodes, or these dashboard nodes, go ahead and watch our previous videos that go over each of them. In this case, I will be using a node red dashboard button that I can click and I want to create a new log entry every single time I click that button. Then I'll come through and read the value that I want to log from the local IO, and I'll make some changes to it before finally writing it to a file. To make those changes, I'll be using a change node, but there are a couple of different ways you could do it, like using a function node if you're more comfortable with JavaScript. So let's go through all of these, starting at the top with the button. Before I can add a button to node red, I first need to create a group, and each group needs to exist on a tab. In this case, I'll just create a simple home tab and select add, and I'll create a new group within that called logging. So now that I have a tab and a group, I can add this button to that group. In this case, I want to log a fuel level. So I'll simply label the button that and give the node the exact same name. So now I'll click done and we can see my buttons all set up. Now I need to determine exactly what value I'll be reading from my localhost device. So back in Groove Manage, I can select IO channels and see all my options. In this case, I wanna bring in this analog input fuel level right here. So if I select that, we can see that we're on module zero, channel two, since this is a Groove Rio, I only have that one built-in module with the index of zero. My channel is number two, and I have this analog input, and I wanna read in this value here, since I can nice and easily change it to be very low or very high using a potentiometer. So now back in node red, I'll put in my data type of an analog channel, put my module index of zero, my channel index of two, and then I'll put in the node name that is read fuel. So now when I click done, that's the groove taken care of. Now I need to figure out exactly how I'm formatting this message.payload. In this case, I don't want to set it to be some static string. I want to create an expression that reformats the message.payload to be a couple of separated value with a title on it. In this case, the expression will be figured out using what's called a JSONata. It's very easy to create simple statements using JSONata, but if you're unfamiliar with it, you can come over to these three dots on the right hand side to open up this expression editor where they do give you a test screen. In this case, my payload will be coming in as a number, not this hello world string. So that I know what I'm bringing in as an example message, I'll make that change first. Now for my expression, I want to create an initial start of the string before I put in my comma. In this case, I'll be putting double quotes around one value, and then inside that value, I will use single quotes, and you can see the difference there, to create a string that says fuel level. Then after those quotes, I'll have a comma, and then I'll use the and operator to add on my old message.payload. So now I'll get this nice new string that in its entirety contains the quotes around fuel level with an underscore in the middle. That'll be the title of my data, and then a comma, and then the value as it comes in. And so every time the payload changes, there we go, we can see that my result changes as well, and we get this nice comma separated value string here. So now when I click done, we'll see that that's the expression taken care of, and I can say change to CSV. So now when I click done, we've got our change node taken care of, we just need to figure out this file node. So in the file node, I do need to set my full path. So I'll go back to Groove Manage and figure out where that is. Under systems, I just select files, and we can see here there is either the option to use an internal drive or USB drives. When you first get a Groove device, it won't let you just plug in a USB stick and have it be accessible. You do have to go to the USB settings page, enable USB, and make sure auto mount is enabled. Now when I select save, and go back to my file settings, I can take my standard USB key and plug that into my Groove Rio, and after just a couple of seconds, it'll be recognized, auto mounted, and I'll be able to view it right here. And there it is, we can see my partition right here. If I select it, we can see that I already have some example files on here, and we can see the full path at the top here. 
Note that if you do plug in a USB hub into your Groove device and have multiple storage devices plugged in at once, this last value will change depending on which drive you want to access. We'll go over the use of multiple drives in a future video, but just be mindful of it for the remainder of this one. So I'll highlight that whole thing and copy it to my clipboard so that I don't get it wrong, and come back and paste that into Node Red. Now I just need to put a trailing slash and decide what my file name would be. In this case, I'll keep it really simple, like fuel underscore log dot CSV. It's important that I don't have any weird characters or spaces in my file name, since it does need to be stored in the Linux file system. I also am using dot CSV since I want it to actually be the formatting that I'm putting into the file. If I were to use a dot text file, there's kind of no point in doing this, but I want to make sure that it's there. We're also going to leave the append to file and the new line, since each comma separated line goes on its own new line for the unique logs. So I'll leave those as their default, and I'll name the node the exact same name as the file name so that I can keep track, and click done. So to review, we'll have this Groove UI dashboard come through here, set off this read fuel that will then get sent over to this change node to reformat it into CSV, and finally append that to our file log. To make sure all this is working, I will drag in a debug node so that I can watch to make sure that the values are coming in exactly as I expect. So I'll switch to the debug pane and click deploy. So in order to get to the UI, I need to open a new tab and go to rio-dev, that's my host name, slash node red slash UI with again a trailing slash at the end here. It's very important that you have that trailing slash if you want to reach the node red UI dashboard endpoint. So now when I click enter, we'll see I have my home screen with my logging group and the log fuel level button. So now if I click this and then turn my fuel level down and then click it again, and once more for good measure, I should have three values in my new file. If I go over to my Groove Manage File screen, we can see there was no log file, but when I refresh, there we go, we can see it gets added right there. So now we'll select this and we see, yes, it's 76 bytes, it already has some data in it, and if I were to come back and log just one more time and refresh this page, we can see it went from 76 up to 105 bytes. So it is increasing in size every single time I create a new log. Let's figure out what should be in this log. So if I come back here into node red, we can see I should have my fuel level comma, and then 2000 or 26,000, then 10,000, 23,000 and 25,000. So let's go into this file screen and I could open download the file to the system that I'm currently using to view Groove Manage. I could copy it to another space that's on the Rio, for example, put it in the storage directly on the Rio or move it to a different USB drive if I do have one attached, or I could move it and not create a copy. And finally, of course, I can delete it. Let's open it up and have a look. We'll see it's downloaded it to my system, so I'll just select it. And here we go. SDA1 underscore fuel underscore log dot CSV, and we can see that I have my nicely formatted CSV files right here. So now with that done, I can just come back here and we'll see that this flow is working perfectly. Now there is one thing to make note of. If you are removing this drive later, you won't want to have this fixed file name in here, and I'll show you why. If you're just using this for mass storage and you just want some extra storage available on your Rio and you never intend to pull this drive out, this will work fine and you can end the video here. If you do intend on removing your drive though, you will need to take a couple of extra steps. If we go into the file screen and go back to my USB drives, we can see if I go to safely remove and select yes to confirm it, it will not let me unbound the drive because it says that it's busy, even though currently I'm not actually writing to it. The reason for this is that Node Red is trying to hold on to this device because this file name string is fixed in the device. It's a static value, so Node Red holds on to this. But that's okay, we can get around this. If I view the help tab for this node, we can see that the file node can accept an input that's message.filename. And so if I don't configure the file name directly in the node here and cut that out, we can see that I can use this property to determine that field. So now I'll click done. And when I go to make my changes, so instead of just setting my message.payload to be that new formatted value, I'll also add a new property where I want to set message.filename to be that string. And I can use a constant string here, or I could even pull this in from another value. For example, I could type in exactly which drive I want to use or a different file name into a field in either Groove View or the Node Red dashboard and have this set dynamically rather than this static value. You have a lot of power when it comes to Node-RED, you just need to set the right properties. 
So now if I click done and deploy, we'll see that if I go back, I still have my drive here. I still have my log. And if I were to come back here and set a couple of more logs, we'll see that yes, I can in fact refresh this page. It's gone from 105 to 163. So it is still correctly logging and we're still able to reach this drive. That has broken nothing. We're still successfully writing to our file. But now if I come back to my USB drive listings and click safely remove and confirm that, we'll see that I'm able to safely unmount. And when I close that, you'll see that this drive will disappear. So now it's really important to note that I must have physical access to my device if I want to see those files again, since I will have to unplug the drive and plug it back in again before the files will reappear. And there we go, it has come back with exactly the same path. One other thing to note is if I do come here and safely remove and unmount the device, if I were to go back into Node Red and try to create additional logs, let's just give that a go, you'll see that we're going to get an error over here in the debug pane since that endpoint no longer exists. Even though I haven't physically removed the drive yet, I have unmounted it and Linux cannot find its way to that file path. So just be aware of that before you go ahead and start unmounting things.